understain a bit of the questions that I received. So this is just a continuation of the other video that I started the other day. So let's get right into it. Uh, 11th questions that I got was, do I need any clicks to sign up for an agency? And my answer to that question is no, you don't need NCLEX to sign up to an agency. You can sign up to an agency even if you haven't done anything, they will help you from scratch up to the time you'll finish. The twelfth question is, what if I passed my NCLEX and I want to join an agency? And my answer to that is it is perfectly fine even if you passed your NCLEX and you want to join an agency you'll have an upper advantage in fact agencies like Avant right now they are giving a bonus for those people who come to them with an NCLEX pass so just know that just ensure that you meet the requirements of the agency that you want so do your research before you put your application in. You may have passed your NCLEX, yes, but you need to meet the requirements of that agency. So passing an, your NCLEX is a good thing, but just look at the agency and make sure you, pa you meet their requirements that they need for you to be a part of them. Thirteenth question is, what if I failed my NCLEX? Well, this, the answer to that is, failing the NCLEX is not a bad thing. It happens, people fail the NCLEX. People fail even more than once. But at the end of the day, they succeed after one or more attempts. So this is just a bump in the road. You can take the NCLEX, you should firstly accept the results and see where you went wrong and reset, study again and plan to retake the NCLEX and after you've passed, you can continue. NCLEX is just, I know it's the major thing, but if you fail it, it shouldn't deter you from going ahead and redoing it because exams are hard no exam is easy so failing an exam shouldn't be something to discourage you people pass people fail so just take it positively and redo the exam and you'll pass it as long as you do your you are soul searching and see where you went wrong while you are studying for the first time or what strategies that you used that didn't work and reset and redo the end clicks. So that shouldn't deter you from continuing and going ahead and do the end clicks again. The 14th question is, do agencies pay for an exam, for the exams? This question was, sent by someone who wanted to start the the process and my answer to them is yes some agencies pay for your exams others don't but even those who don't pay for it they usually reimburse you at the end of the journey so just keep that in mind so don't get discouraged that an agency didn't pay for your exam because most of them will return your money after you they are done with the exams and you land in the u.s they'll reimburse you back your money so don't worry about the agencies paying for your exam or not paying for your exam if you get an agency that will not pay for your exam probably they'll reimburse you the money and you'll see it in your contract as you sign your contract with them. The 15th question that I got was, which visa category will one will an agency file for me? And the visa category that 
agencies usually file for nurses is the B EB3 visa. It is an employment-based visa which will give you a permanent residency and even citizenship in the U.S. So just take note of that. That's a good thing that comes with you being a U.S. RN. So, yeah. Another question that I got, that's the 16th question, is will my agency provide visa support for my family? And the answer to that is yes, most agencies file for a petition for your spouse and your children and your children should be unmarried and should be under 21 years of age. So you won't leave your family behind. They will also petition for your family. But what I know is most agencies will pay only for you, a visa for you, but you will have to pay for your spouse so just take note of that as yeah you will have to pay for your spouse and your children but they will petition the visa for you so it's a good thing because you need a person who is in the u.s to petition a visa for you so they will put petition for your family but then you will have to pay for the visas for your family. Seventeenth question is kinda related to the sixteenth one. Someone asked me when will I receive my immigrant visa? Hmm. So my answer to this question is after all all the processes have been done and the NVC has received all your documents and the USIS CIS will determine if according to your category priority date and CC and your country of birth so you won't really know exactly when you'll receive your immigrant visa but after you've you've sent all your documents and your family's documents to NVC they will now send your documents to the consult in your country and then you will wait for them to call you for an interview. That's when you'll know if when you'll receive your immigrant visa. And usually they they look at your priority date or your case complete date, which is the CC. The case complete date is mostly what is used and it will determine when they'll call you for an interview and they will determine if they'll give you an immigrant visa. Teen, number 18 is, do I need a visa screen certificate? The answer to that is yes. The visa screening certificate is required by law and without it you will not be able to be issued an immigrant visa. So when you attend the exit interview for your immigrant or green card visa at the U.S. consult, you may pre you must present a copy of your visa screening certificate to the consult officer. So that is a must. You need the visa screening certificate, and this you'll get at the almost at the end of the process after you've passed your NCLEX, done your IELTS, and you'll be able to receive your visa screening certificate number 19 is who will be your employer your agency or your hospital your agency will be your employer for the period that you'll be on contract with them not the hospital that you'll be working with under your agency so just take note of that. After you've finished your contract with the agency is when you your hospital can be your employer. So when you are under the contract with your agency, your agency is your employer. The last question, that is question 20. Are there direct hire agencies? And this question made me go and do my research and I realized, yes, there are, 
but I don't know how they operate so you can just check them out one agency is only one that I was able to research and get and its name is Col Connectis I, I'll put it on the screen so that you can see yeah that's the only agency that I I came across that is giving a direct hire so if you passed your end clicks and you've done everything on your own you can go to their site and check them out I found them on Facebook but you can google them and see what they are about yeah so I don't know much about direct hires but you can go check them out because they give direct hire so guys thank you so much for watching thank you for supporting me if you haven't watched the part one video of this video you should go back and watch them because i also tackled a few questions 10 questions and this was, was this was just the last video that i was finishing up answering your questions so that is it guys thank you so much for coming by and see you next week when i post another video bye don't forget to subscribe and like and share see you